And now the final part of the serial, A Small Town Murder by Scott Cherry. Jackie Hartwell realises who the real killer must be. Sorry I'm late, Jackie. It's OK. Incident room. Top floor for the big screen. What's happened? Looks like organised crime were involved. OK. We need to act quickly on this, so if I can have your full attention. As I'm sure you're aware, we're now dealing with two murders. Uh, if we can start with the phone footage. OK, so... Sorry. This is... Sorry, yeah, look, we've only just started. This was taken by a phone just after Connie Hudson's concert at the Botanical Gardens. And there's Connie signing copies of her book. Uh, and if we pause it, that door there leads out to the main terrace. And the rock pool where we found Abby Hudson's body is about 100 yards in that direction. And zooming in, okay. we just catch a glimpse of this gentleman here. Known to some of you, I'm sure. Keith Bateman, previous for GBH, malicious wounding and worse, usually on behalf of Jimmy Pine's mob. Why is he there? Well, we think his boss has just found out Abby Hudson and Mike Webb were giving information to the drug squad. And talking of Mike Webb, this is CCTV from Spaghetti Junction. Webb's body was found beneath this part of the flyover. Only trouble is... It's a blind spot? Exactly. Webb fell from the A38 Aston Expressway at the exact point where it runs under the M6, out of view of the cameras. Which means identifying the vehicle transporting Webb is going to be tricky. We know he was transported, dead or alive, because there's no footage of him approaching the expressway on foot. Uh, have you got a time of death, Gov? <sighs> Not yet, no. Can I have a quick word? So I've got a meeting with the Chief Superintendent. Yeah, he won't take a minute. So, you are thinking Jimmy Pine's mob are responsible for both murders? Certainly looks that way. But Bill told them Mike Webb was his informant. But he was trying to deflect their attention away from Abby. Well, it doesn't mean he succeeded. Jackie, we've got Keith Bateman, a known hitman, in the gardens minutes before she was killed. Because he was following Mike Webb. Gov, Abby wasn't killed by a hitman. She died from a rage attack. So she fought back. The cuts and bruises on her hands aren't defence wounds. We didn't find any skin tissue under her fingernails. But those injuries came from trying to drag herself out of the rock pool. She was hit repeatedly by someone who was in a complete state of fury. Fury isn't Keith Bateman's style. Well, what did we recover from the scene, Gov? Her, her mobile, um, comb... Yeah, basically the contents of her rucksack. Cigarettes, lighters... Yeah, well, let's check the list. Uh, one of her sandals had come off in the water. Uh, mobile, comb, cigarettes, book, remains of a sandwich, hairband, here. Yeah. A sandwich? Yeah. Why? What about it? Abby's complete history, according to a GP. So she'd been epileptic from birth? Yeah. Hmm. What's, um, what's FAS? Oh, um, fetal alcohol syndrome. It's what happens when the mother drinks when she's pregnant. Can cause heart and liver defects, cerebral palsy. Uh, and it's also a spectrum disorder. So learning difficulties, hyperactivity, inappropriate behaviour. And epilepsy. Yeah. And they're beginning to realise the mother doesn't have to drink much. So if Connie was an alcoholic... Oh. Hi, Laura. Everything OK? We're just on our way out. Mum's got a rehearsal. For another concert? She didn't want to let people down, so... Do you mind if we come in for a few minutes? We'll try not to keep you. It's about Mike Webb. OK. We don't think he kills Abby. In fact, we know he didn't. You're joking. Of course he killed her. Abby was still sending texts after he'd left the Botanical Gardens. So, um, can we just go over the events of that evening? I know we've done it already and you've got a rehearsal to go to, Connie, but I'd like to make sure my notes are completely accurate. Can you check as we go along? Here? OK. So, the concert started at oh. half seven and finished... Well, I was singing for about an hour. 8.30? Oh, yeah. And was Abby in the audience? 
She turned up when Mum was signing copies of a book. The first time I saw her was when she was in the queue and she was upset. Because? She'd just had a row with Mike. He threatened her with a knife. Um, according to Jackie's note, she asked Abby to keep her voice down. Yes. Yeah. And got quite angry with her. Oh, well, um, it was my big night, Tracy. I hadn't been in front of an audience for years. Oh, oh, hold, hold on, Mum. Sorry, sorry you, you're talking to us as if we're suspects. We don't mean to, but you are important witnesses. Probably the last people to see Abby alive. It's okay, Jackie. Carry on. So, you asked Abby to keep her voice down. And she ignored me and got more and more upset. So I took her outside and got her something to eat. What did you get her? A sandwich. Okay. And then she went to go and look at the birds. And you watched her go? Towards the aviary, yeah. And that was the last time you saw her? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's basically what we've got written down. So that seems all pretty straightforward. Except for one thing. You said you got Abby a sandwich. Yeah. Then I wonder why she didn't eat it. She must have done. According to the pathology report, her stomach was empty. In fact, she hadn't eaten for ages. So you'd assume if you'd given her a sandwich, uh, she'd have walked it down. Well, then uh, maybe I just got her a drink. Um, in your initial statement, you said you got Abby a drink and a sandwich. In fact, you stated it twice. And you said it again just now. We found a sandwich near Abby's body, and assuming it's hers, I'm just wondering how it got there, and why she hadn't eaten it. Laura? Well, maybe it wasn't her sandwich. Look, look, I'm sorry, Mum's got a rehearsal and we need to leave, so if, if you wouldn't mind coming back later. Hmm, Mum? I asked you, Laura, about the bruises on your right hand. What caused them? So you are treating me as a suspect. I caught my fingers putting chairs away. Mum, I told you I hurt my hand. Remember? If you say so, sweetheart. You got very emotional talking about Abby. Of course I did. She was my sister, and you just told me she'd been murdered. You were very honest. Told me how hard it had been. Growing up with a sister had been so difficult. Well, she wasn't difficult all the time. Always trying to make you unhappy, always angry towards you and your mum. So when she turned up on your mum's big night in a stage... She said Mike was trying to find her. So I knew she wasn't going to go. So? I told you, that's why I got her a drink and a... So you did get her a sandwich. <sighs> Laura? <sighs> Soon as she said she was starving... I knew that was how I could get her away. Because that was the problem. Whenever she was with Mum, she always behaved like a child. So she went into the gardens, and I said I'd take her something. And did you? Laura, love. I took her a sandwich. She was down in the rock garden by the pond. Oh. And of course, as soon as she saw me, she started complaining. Couldn't believe all I'd got her was a sandwich. As usual, it was all about her and what she wanted and what I should have done. So she started swearing at me, and I got so annoyed, I didn't give it to her. I just turned and walked away. And what did she do? Came after me, shouting and pushing, but I wouldn't give it to her. And then she started swearing and calling me names, saying I was frigid and ugly, and that it was pathetic I was still living at home, you know, the usual insults. And all the time she was pushing me and pushing me and trying to grab the plate, so I just snapped and I pushed her back. And she fell straight into the pond. And when she started getting out, I picked up a stand and I hit her. And I kept hitting her and hitting her. And every time she tried to get out, I hit her. Till she stopped moving. <laughs> Laura, would you be willing to come with us to the station? Make a formal statement? What? Laura? Of course. What did I do? What did I do? Shall we go now? What did you say, Mum? What? Hmm? Did you say... What did you do? <laughs> you know what you did. Of course you did. Admit it. Tell Jackie and Tracy you know what you did. Come on. I've been you. She found out from her doctor years ago. 
Why she had so many problems. Why she had convulsions as a baby and kept running away from school. Why she was always unhappy and always getting things wrong and losing her temper and getting into trouble. What? And that was all your fault, wasn't it? Mm. Just say it. No. How you ruined her life before she was born. Stop! Don't you dare! Laura, I won't have it. Do you hear me? Because you felt so sorry for yourself. Stop! Abby needed you to love her, and I needed you to love me. No, stop! But it was always our poor old Connie Hudson and her tragic life, and how everyone was always letting her down. Oh, it, it was always somebody else's fault. It's rubbish! Oh, 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 Connie! Oh, oh Connie! Oh, 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 stop it! Oh, oh, They've ruined my life, Jackie. All of them. They've ruined everything. Everything. It's all right. I got you a drink. The DI wants to interview you now. All right? Uh, yeah. Is Mum okay? I'm going to go and visit her later. She said she didn't drink when she was expecting me. But, um... What? Maybe she did. Do you think there's something wrong with me? No. Not at all. <laughs> I'm going to miss you, DC Morton. <laughs> I'm going to miss you too. Come here. <laughs> Give my regards to Dudley Nick. Will do. And if you need any advice, you know where to find me. Not sure if I've got what it takes to family liaison, to be honest. <laughs> of course you have. You'll be brilliant. You've got the makings of a great FLO. You reckon? I don't reckon. I know. I'll keep in touch. Mm. And keep me updated. Promise? Yeah. Bye, love. <laughs> Bye. That's Tracy. Yeah. Shame she's got to go back. Thought she said she talked too much. We've all got our faults. Hmm. Interview with Laura go okay? Pretty straightforward. I'd better go and see her, Mum. Yeah. Oh, Jackie, just in case you had any lingering suspicion Bill Kinning was involved in Mike Webb's murder, we've just identified a stolen Toyota which may have been used to dump Webb's body. Got a time? Just before midnight, evening of the 23rd, when Bill was at his leaving do. <laughs> And that means he's not involved, even though he was responsible for Mike Webb being killed. Sorry? Now, when Bill told Jimmy Pine's mob Webb was his informant, he lied. But that's not incitement. Like you say, it's just I'm a lie. I'm not saying it's incitement, but... Sorry. Did you just say, it's just a lie? <sighs> Come on, Jackie. Bill didn't know they were going to throw Mike Webb off Spaghetti Junction. What did he think they were going to do? Slap his wrist? All he was trying to do was protect Abby Hudson. And ended up getting Mike Webb killed. Is this because I didn't tell you Bill took Abby's phone from the evidence room? Oh, for God's sake. But why don't we meet? You know, talk it through properly after work. There's a great little restaurant opened on Corporation Street. Not hungry. Well, then how about just a drink? Jackie! And that's it for today. Weekend, tomorrow at four o'clock with Jane. Bye-bye. Woman's Hour was presented by Kenny Murray and produced by Rebecca Myatt. In A Small Town Murder by Scott Cherry, Jackie Hartwell was played by Mira Sayal, Peter by Matthew Marsh, Connie by Susan Brown, Laura was Jasmine Hyde, Tracy, Kelly Shirley, Bill was played by Michael Higgs, and Steve by Scott Cherry. The drama was produced by Clive Brill and was a Brill production for BBC Radio 4. After the news, Paul Lewis asks, what is a fair rate of tax? Too high and people won't pay. Too low and the amount of money raised won't be enough. Can pay, won't pay is in a couple of minutes. Britain has a reasonably successful economy, but it harbours one dirty little secret. We're lacking when it comes to productivity. What we produce from an hour's labour is way behind what the French or Germans seem to be able to produce. We keep our incomes up only by working more people for more hours. It's got so bad, to be honest, it's actually something of a mystery. So on the bottom line this week, we ask what we're doing wrong and how we make ourselves more productive. Join me, Evan Davis, for a new series of The Bottom Line with our take on the UK's productivity puzzle 
next Thursday evening at half past eight on BBC Radio 4 and then available on the Radio 4 website. And now the final part of the serial, A Small Town Murder by Scott Cherry. Jackie Hartwell realises who the real killer must be. Sorry I'm late, Jackie. It's okay. Incident room. Top floor for the big screen. What's happened? Looks like organised crime were involved. Okay, we need to act quickly on this, so if I can have your full attention. As I'm sure you're aware, we're now dealing with two murders. Uh, if we can start with the phone footage. Okay, so... Sorry. This is... Very good. Yeah, look, we've only just started. This was taken by a phone just after Connie Hudson's concert at the Botanical Gardens. And there's Connie signing copy. Trouble is... It's a blind spot? Exactly. Webb fell from the A38 Aston Expressway at the exact point where it runs under the M6, out of view of the cameras. Which means identifying the vehicle transporting Webb is going to be tricky. We know he was transported, dead or alive, because there's no footage of him approaching the expressway on foot. Uh, have you got a time of death, Gov? <sighs> Not yet, no. Can I have a quick word? I've got a meeting with the Chief Superintendent. Yeah, he won't take a minute. So, you are thinking Jimmy Pine's mob are responsible for both murders? Certainly looks that way. But Bill told them Mike Webb was his informant, but he was trying to deflect their attention away from Abby. It's of her book. Uh, and if we pause it, that door there leads out to the main terrace. And the rock pool where we found Abby Hudson's body is about 100 yards in that direction. And zooming in, okay. we just catch a glimpse of this gentleman here, known to some of you, I'm sure. Keith Bateman, previous for GBH, malicious wounding and worse, usually on behalf of Jimmy Pine's mob. Why is he there? Well, we think his boss has just found out Abby Hudson and Mike Webb were giving information to the drug squad. And talking of Mike Webb... This is CCTV from Spaghetti Junction. Webb's body was found beneath this part of the flyover. Only a mobile comb, cigarettes, book remains of a sandwich hairband here yeah. a sandwich yeah why what about it this abby's complete history according to a gp so she'd been epileptic from birth yeah hmm what's them what's fas oh um fetal alcohol syndrome it's what happens when the mother drinks when she's pregnant. Can cause heart and liver defects, cerebral palsy, uh, and it's also a spectrum disorder. So, learning difficulties, hyperactivity, inappropriate. That doesn't mean he succeeded. Jackie, we've got Keith Bateman, a known hitman, in the gardens minutes before she was killed. Because he was following Mike Webb. Gov, Abby wasn't killed by a hitman, she died from a rage attack. So she fought back. The cuts and bruises on her hands aren't defence wounds. We didn't find any skin tissue under her fingernails. But those injuries came from trying to drag herself out of the rock pool. She was hit repeatedly by someone who was in a complete state of fury. Fury isn't Keith Bateman's style. Well, what did we recover from the scene, Gov? Her, her mobile, um, comb... Yeah, basically the contents of her rucksack. Cigarettes, lighter... Yeah, well, let's check the list. One of her sandals had come off in the water. Uh.